right, race fans, get ready. Pro Light Riders coming out of staging, getting ready for parade. This is the waning stages of the 2019 Canadian Snowcross Championships, and today, a very dynamic track. Welcome to the Chicopee Ski Center for round six of the 2019 Rockstar Energy Snowcross Championships. Two fantastic pro classes of racing today. Pro Lights are first, getting ready to go on parade. This is professional snowcross racing at its best. the Chicopee Ski Center in downtown Kitchener, Ontario for the 2019 Rockstar Energy Snowcross Championship. Mark Travers and Brian Coster in the booth. And of course, today's racing will be brought to you by FXR, Race Division and Factory Ride. And of course, Royal Distributing, Canada's Power Sports Leader. Brian, let's have a look at today's track. Much different than what we've seen in the past as they're racing on a ski hill. We're taking a little bit of the snow bike final here. We're seeing the number 53 of Yannick Boucher out front the class of the field. But uphills and downhills, this is a very dynamic track. Definitely, Mark. They've got an uphill start, which is great for the spectators. They have an awesome view of this magnificent course up and down. We can see Brian Hunt pressuring Taylor Campuccini here in the Snowflake Final. Nice little doubles. A rough track with some great jumps and some ice underneath. Some warmer temperatures here in southwestern Ontario. Give it a little ice under all that beauty snow. Nice job, Fats. Okay, Pro Light Riders going out on to parade right now. We're getting ready to go get some green. Welcome back to Kitchener, Ontario in the 2019 Rockstar Energy Snowcross Championships. Mark Travers and Brian Coster in the booth as we get set for the Pro Life Final. Great shot of the Country Corners Arctic Cats, Brian. They have been the dominant sled and team in this class so far this season. Yeah, coming into this round, it is Taylor Lightfoot with the points lead. Nipping on his heels, though, there is a lot of fast riders. Walkler, Billings, Kale Firth, and uh, Alex Ross. We got Mick Dubé, a whole bunch of speedsters here right at the back door of those cats. And we know the ski has got some horsepower. Might play into their favor up that big hill. All right, let's get caught up with the points after five of eight rounds of the Pro Light Stains. Of course, you were talking about Lightfoot. He's up there. My thoughts been looking good lately, Brian, and I like the fact that Rooney had a fast couple of qualifiers Qualifying heats today, so we're going to keep our eyes on the 204 Monster Energy Pillar Sausage Polaris. Okay, now remember, riders have to come up to that line, Brian. We're seeing right there that is the alignment rope, if you will, getting all the skis lined up so that nobody has an advantage off the start. And once that rope goes in, things start to heat up. This Pro Life Final will be brought to you by FXR Racing Apparel. Everywhere you go, Brian, you see the FXR gear on the track. Riders now focusing on Big Bad Mike, our start maestro. Waiting for the light to go green. Brian, headline is green. Off the line they go and up the big hill. Awesome on board footage with Taylor Lightfoot. It looks like teammate Walkler with that off shot gets a little sideways. Kale <laughs> Firth on the outside. Couple cats lead the charge. Firth has been spectacular, but let's talk about Walkler, Brian. 14 years old. This kid is a phenom in this class. Yeah, big boy, too. He can handle the sled as we see. Oh, oh. Firth goes high. Inside line for Lightfoot. Gets a nice little peek here. Looks like, oh, I can see first ski right there on the oh. side. Contact, Wait, I don't know, over goes our series points leader, Lightfoot, upside down. Interesting, Brian, that wide side of the track on the outside, a little softer, looks like maybe that, that inside ski tucked it over, he went back to our leader, Walkler, coming through that rhythm section oh, and nice. up the hill, absolutely gorgeous, first and second place, well, really starting to separate now. Big bumps, and here is a replay of the incident, looks like he's given... Firth, a lot of room, makes a beautiful pass right there and just gets Whoa. caught up in that little hole and just gets it all sideways and hooks the ski and over he goes and guys bumping and grinding to get away. Take an evasive maneuvering not to run over the downed rider. You talked about this part of the track as being the most difficult as they come down the yeah. hill, generate a lot of speed, and then have to break into this berm corner. Yeah, and there is some icy surfaces underneath from the milder temperatures we talked about earlier. Track crews doing an awesome job with what they have to work with. Some good snow on top, and of course, being a ski hill, lots of snow blown all winter, so... 
able to get a great racetrack dialed in. This section here was a triple in the earlier motos of the day, or heats, I should say, but it's getting a little worn out, so they're doing a double single. Stewart looking good through that rhythm section. I see Mathod in there as well, and Lightfoot back on track. Here he is blasting up that hill, Brian. Remember, split course from the start. Start on the right, track on the left. Oh, he's got some good lines out here. The one thing I want to talk about, we saw the 204 of Rooney in here in the mix. He was great earlier on today, and now with Lightfoot all the way back, giving opportunities for other riders like Rooney and Billings to get in the mix. 100%. The thought there on the 55 could be the next victim for Lightfoot. Lightfoot has made up a ton of ground. There is young Cameron Walkler. Wow. Look at him go. <laughs> Riding the wheels off of that Arctic Cat blasting up the FXR Hill to the Rockstar Sweeper around he goes the top end of the racetrack and you can just see that sled bouncing all over the place not much of a reprieve for these riders nowhere to really rest here on this track Lightfoot back up now in seventh place and yes dogging Mathot interesting Lightfoot's been so dominant but in the last few races these other riders have been starting to get in his grill I think Walkler may be a little bit in his head and all these fast kids and you get a good start and that makes a world of difference here it is hard to pass we talk about the snow dust the spray the roost it is punishing when you get in behind someone it's one thing Travis to catch it's another thing to pass out here let's talk about our leader Walkler we talked about the country corners he's also sponsored by Gamma but looks a little bit different in that fly gear so great to be able to separate those two riders out there yeah, a bunch of different sponsors. They do share Country Corners as well. A huge Articat dealer in eastern Ontario who have stepped it up large this year uh, with their pro light effort. And here is Firth now under some heavy pressure. Ronnie gets a little tic-tac-toe. Let's talk about the 204 of Pepperoni on that Monster Energy <laughs> Pillar Sausage Polaris. Very interesting to see two different sleds battling on a track like this, especially with the players being the only carbureted sled on the track. Yeah, Ronnie is looking awesome in that downhill double section. That's a great point. Ski-Doo, Articat, or electronic fuel injection. Tuners don't have to work so hard for the elevation and temperature change. Ronnie's mechanics, they're in that carburetor changing jets and all kinds of that old school wizardry. Great shot of the number 779 of Billings. He's in fourth place. He's been trying to hunt down Ronnie, but this track is all about the starts, Brian. You mentioned it off the top. You get a good start, you can start to get some clean air because I think it's a difficult track to pass on. Yeah, to make passes, you got to get pretty aggressive, get out on the inside, maybe a little tap here or there, or really get creative with your line choice. It is extremely possible, but it's a lot more difficult difficult than it looks. Yeah, you think about tracks like Lindsay that were super tight and even that Innisfil track with that very difficult rhythm section that was causing all kinds of problems for the riders. Brian, this one's a pinner. You just got to get on it and hit it. Oh, absolutely. Back there at Georgian Downs, a little tighter, bumpier, made for some really aggressive passing. Here they spread out a bit, but we're going to see some action here before this is over. Billings hanging tough there at fourth, but our leader, Cameron Walkler, he is unchallenged right now, picking good lines, still getting a real rough ride out of this deal. At 14 years of age, too, Brian, this pro light class is built for guys like Cameron Walkler. They're getting up their race craft, but yet this guy seems like an experienced veteran as we get into the later stages of this series. Through the Daco rhythm lane, taking the checkers. That is the Royal Distributing checker flag. Cameron Walkler takes off another W. Very exciting pro light race. Let's get to our top 10 in the final. Walkler, of course, your winner first with a great ride in second. Nice to see Justin Rooney on the top three. Let's go down to Lightfoot finishing sixth. We got Stuart, Mathot, Dubé, and Norris. Third place right here in pro light. Justin Ronnie on the Pillars Monster Polaris. Justin, a great finish for you today. Yeah, it's good. The, uh, the track is extremely tough. And I knew coming off the start that if you uh, didn't start up front with those guys, you'd be battling in the back. And I think uh, there's a lot of fast guys, but it's just whoever got a start. On the OTS FF Arctic Cat with Rockstar backing, young Kale Firth coming in second place here. What a great ride, man. And you've been, your head down, you've had some ups and downs all year, you know, great finishes over the bars, and uh, you held it together today. 
Yeah, it was a hard track. It was really icy out there, and I heard someone behind me, so I was just trying to push myself, and I had tried to keep it smooth, kept my head down, and just ran my own race. We're here with Black River Racing. Cameron Walkler with the win on that Articat. Oh, my goodness, Cameron. 14 years of age. You rode out there like a, uh, like a grown man. Yeah, this is the kind of track that I really practice on. Really try to get through those holes good, and... Um, just check out and run a smooth race. A lot of fast guys in the class, rough tracks that you're riding on. I think maybe your height and uh, ability to work that, those whoops and, and all that uneven ground is uh, come to your advantage. Yeah, my size definitely helps moving around that heavy sled, but it's also practice that really helps you get through those holes really nicely. Nice job, Cameron Walkler. Okay, let's get to our points in the pro light class. After six of eight rounds, Lightfoot's lead is starting to get a little tight as Walkler moves in on Firth, Mathot, and Billinger top five. Here's our top three on the day. Rooney, Firth, and Walkler. Pro final, next. Welcome back to the Chicopee Ski Center in Kitchener, Ontario for round six of the 2019 Rockstar Energy Snow Cross Championships. Mark Travers and Brian Koss are in the booth as we get set to bring the big boys onto the line fast. This is the premier class, 600 cc's, finely tuned two-stroke machines. Let's get to our points after five of eight rounds. Jake Weir is leading the charge, Brian, the dominant rider. Jonas, our last year's champion, still looking good, but I like the number 117 of Isaac Sinaj, who's been ultra fast the last couple of weeks. Nice shot of Bailey Motorsports, Mitch King on his ski do. They've got St. Ange helping out. There's Kale, Kalen, teammates to Dave Jonas on the Polaris. Getting ready on the outside. One of the younger riders on the gate. Nice overview here of our finalists. Will it be Jonas? Will it be McCoy? Or will it be Weir? With that whole shot, they've been the best starters so far this year. Starts in snowcross are so important, but this one especially because of that long drive up the hill, Brian. This pro final will be brought to you by Royal Distributing, Canada's power sports leader, a great sponsor and supporter of pro snowcross racing in Canada. We see Callan on the inside. Let's go to Big Bad Mike, see if we can get the point. We're looking for green, Brian. Lights green, they're off the line. Nice clean start, no one jumped it. We're there on the cat, wheelies up the hill. So Isaac stayed on right beside him on the skidoo. Edges him around the outside, great start for St. Ongi. I love the way they slide up the hill, that right-hander, and they have to double into the back section, and here they come. The most difficult part of the track, Brian. Look at Weir with that inside cutter line, and it looks like Jonas is now in fourth place. Wow, and you can just see the roost off Jonas's outside ski coming into that prom. He is pushing hard. There is McCoy taking a nice rhythm seat bounce, and on board with oh. Isaac Sato. They go for the triple. Cases it pretty darn hard there, Travis. Loses a little ground. Weir dusts off the goggles a little wow. bit. Has a great drive up the inside. Can St. Ange hang on? Oh my goodness. The ski has got some great power, but so does that cat. They are neck and neck. We are so aggressive on that inside line, Brian, and you talked about that triple risk reward. St. Ange goes for it in the first lap. Now St. Ange looking good. Great defense. Oh. Looking wide. There's that cutback for Weir. He loves that line. Travis, it looks like he's making it stick through the Mystic Lubricants. Drop away into this double, double section. He does. Wow. Coming up to this finish line area. Here on board with Isaac. He opts to double single this time because, boy, that was a ballsy move there to case it on the opening lap. You know, here is Weir setting him up, fakes to the outside, and it's right here, Travis, where he just cuts under, wicks that throttle, and pins it to wins it, and gets on the outside. What a setup, experienced move. Both these riders, 18 years old, they've got a bright future here, both chasing that Blair Morgan Cup. Wow, there's just something about the way Weir rides the sled, Brian. He's just got a little bit more control, a little bit better eye for lines, and let's talk about tuning and suspension. He's got throttle under the thumb like no other sled out there. Yeah, it's funny, the Articats running the air suspension, these other manufacturers and teams opting for the coil spring traditional kind
kind of shock absorbers. So we're running the air this year, and the teams do a lot of testing. The other teams finding the coil overs the way to go. The 335 of McCoy looking great in third place, Brian. We think back to that race in Lindsay when he got landed on by Jonas, but he's come back strong. Again, that St. Ange team looking good with two pilots in the top three. Yeah, McCoy amazing. Younger rider looking for some experience. Made a few little inexperienced moves here and there throughout the season cost him some points but look for him in the future he definitely is going to make a name for himself in canadian snowcross think about snowcross racing brian as we compare it to other disciplines motocross or snow bike because the sled is so much bigger and so much heavier the rider has to be almost more in tune with the sled than with those other disciplines oh man when these things start going one way you have to go with them that's why we've seen so many crashes love that outside line by weir saying on that same line using the whole cushion and when you pin it even if you slip it on ice and out of control as soon as that ski kind of hits that bank it sends you in the right direction but it takes a lot of courage to just keep that thumb taped all the way into the corner and these guys are doing a fine job of it well i think it's interesting about this track in particular is there's some flat corners and we noticed that the flat corners are the most difficult ones for the riders to manipulate the way around when there's yeah. a berm corner they can throw it into the berm but those flat corners the sled just kind of plows through man good isolation here on isaac st Ange. what a kid tall lanky and right here this right hander yeah. is very icy underneath and you can see that shine as they accelerate up looking for some snow for some grip but boy he's got some good lines we're a venerable foe he just can't seem to get right in there and show a ski we are made that pass earlier and now keeping about that same three second gap let's think back to 2018 brian dave jonas was the boss dog and he comes into this series and everyone's pointing to him. All the pundits are saying he's going to be the guy to beat. Well, of course he is, but Weir has been so consistent from the beginning to the end. And then other riders like St. Ange have been coming on later in the season. But I guess that's why we go racing, isn't it? It's, it's quite funny with the manufacturers. Certain brands have their dominant years where their sled kind of just has the leg up. Last year, Polaris was that machine. These other guys did their homework coming back up. Polaris now is going to have to go back to that fuel ejection drawing board, I would imagine, to try and keep up here in this tuner's game. Well, if you think about the way these sleds are run, too, and especially on this particular track, these guys are wide open on a lot of sections of this track, so it's not as tight where the throttles are on and off, and I, I can see a huge difference in the mechanics there. Nice shot of McCoy coming down, sitting in third. That's that corner where we were made the pass, and he's bouncing his way through, getting Whoa. all kinds of sideways, almost a high sider there. Hangs on to her. Jonas is lurking right there. Maybe he can capitalize. To our leader, the 459 of Yun Jakey Weir, who has been the dominant force in this particular race ride. First lap makes the pass, gets some clean air. That's exactly where we want to be. And then putting in his lap, St. Ange looking good in second place. Got a great start. Brian was in the lead. Went for that triple risk reward. We're caught up to him and made the pass. But St. Ange looks great in second. And of course, with McCoy in third, the St. Ange recreation team has to be happy with what's going on. But I really think the guy to watch right now is the 115 of Jonas. Jonas has got a lot to prove. He's had a difficult couple last races. He's won some and he crashed in a great finish position that stung points wise but what I'm excited about is Jake Weir and Isaac St. Edge two young riders that have a lot of years of competition ahead of them to bang bars and you know there's got to be a bit of a rivalry brewing between Skidoo and Articat right there. Fabs look at this battle for third is heating up Jonas has found some lines on the track wow. McCoy with some issues we saw him off track Jonas looking good on the inside check out the speed going up that hill they got to be hitting close to 70 mile an hour Jonas around the outside gets him puts him over the berm <laughs> David Yolandis third place on that pillar C6 monster energy Polari taking that third spot as these laps wind down that was a critical move so impressive to watch these professional riders throw these sleds around <laughs> and make moves in in what seems like a foot or two of space between the other riders ah, just awesome to see these guys and come out to one of these events live to really get a taste of the sound and the sights and the smells as jakey weir out front on that country corners article
Trackhound, tuned by James Farrington from RJ Motorsport. He is the clutch master dialing in the settings on these machines. Of course, a spec class, we talk about it, just allowed a silencer in the exhaust, suspension, track, modifications, not much else. Clutching is pretty much the magic. 459 on the country corners. Cat, that's Jake Weir taking the checker flag and winning the pro race here at Chicopee, Kitchener, Ontario, Bryce. St. Ange, Isaac with a beautiful moto, and then here comes Jonas on that Wayne leg prepared Polaris, another amazing mechanic lurking through these pits. There's a lot of talent out here both Welcome back to the 2019 Rockstar Energy Snowcross Championships. And how about the grand prize of the pro class? A Mike Jackson Z71 Chevy to the winner. Let's get to our top 10 from that pro final here in Kitchener. I want to go down to fifth place with King Barnett in sixth, Kale Callen in seventh, Taylor Hunt and Desart in DNF. Pro third place finisher on that Huber Motorsports Polaris, Dave Jonas, last year's champion. Dave, what a moto out there. Not getting the starts that you need, though, in these uh, in these treacherous final motos. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a bit of our struggle this weekend, you know, uh, starts. So it's something that we have to improve on. But uh, you know, we're we're gonna keep fighting. We we don't give up. It's just not our style. And uh, you know, we started like fourth or fifth in that final, and we made some passes. We didn't give up right till the end. So that's what we're gonna keep doing. You know, uh, the last person that's gonna give up is this guy. Second place finisher, Isaac St. Ange, 18 years old on that St. Ange Recreation ski do. Isaac, in the mix every weekend, just getting more and more confident running up front with the fast boys. Yeah, we're trying to push them as hard as we can. And uh, I mean, I kind of came into the season not knowing what, what to expect. So, uh, I mean, it's been a really good season so far and we just want to stay consistent and uh, hopefully be on the box. Well, uh, you're gaining a lot of experience every weekend. You're kind of tall and lanky, able to handle some of those gnarly whoops out there. Oh, yeah, the, the height really helps. I mean, uh, getting over those uh, peaked landings is uh, key. So, yeah, definitely the, the height really helps. On that country corners, Articat, Jake Weir, no stranger to uh, top spot here, buddy. Wow, so becoming a regular thing for you. Yeah, I get good starts, and I just end up up here. Well, Country Corners, Articat, RJ Motorsports, you got James there doing some of your tuning and clutching. Your start was awesome. Talk to us about that move there with Isaac on the triple. Yeah, James got the, my sled going really fast. Rich ripping. <laughs> and um, I just tucked underneath Isaac, then double-double and got him on the outside, which... He is really fast rider, so it was challenging to get around him, but yeah. To our point standings in the pro class as we see the gorgeous snow bike of Brock Hoyer in the background. This is after six of eight rounds. Weir is leading the charge. Jonas, McCoy, St. Ange, and Barnett are your top five. It's been a great day of racing here at the Chicopee Ski Center, Fabs. I've been loving it. Totally awesome translation on a Hoyer's machine. Want to thank Liz and all the Chicopee staff here from the best chalet food in the biz. Go to CSRA's Facebook page and snowcross.com. Nice job, Fabs. You have been watching the 2019 Rockstar Energy Snowcross Championships. Brought to you by FXR, Race Division and Factory Ride. Get yourself some FXR apparel today. And Royal Distributing, Canada's power sports leader. For Brian Costa, Ken Van, and the entire Rockstar Snowcross team, we'll see you next week at Horseshoe Valley for our final two rounds.